Coccolithophores are calcifying unicellular eukaryotic marine algae that produce a cell covering of calcite plates, known as coccoliths, that collectively create a coccosphere. These calcifying phytoplankton have a worldwide distribution and are one of the most significant producers of biogenic calcite, said to play an important role in Earth's biogeochemistry. A single coccolithophore is surrounded by at least 30 coccoliths, which are dumped into the surrounding water when coccolithophores multiply asexually, die, or produce too many coccoliths. It is estimated that the amount of calcite dumped by coccolithophores in a year exceeds 1.5 million tonnes. However, despite their importance, the majority of information on coccolithophores, such as on the molecular and physiological processes of calcification, are restricted to a few model species. The most intensively studied member of the coccolithophores is Emiliania huxleyi, as it is the most abundant coccolithophore species in the ocean, easily cultured under a broad range of environmental conditions, and is globally important. E. huxleyi frequently grows to concentrations of 10 million cells per litre of seawater and have even been found to reach 100 million cells per litre of seawater in ideal conditions and are capable of forming massive blooms in temperate and subpolar regions under a wide variety of environmental conditions due to its considerable intraspecies variability. Despite the small size of E. huxleyi cells, that being 4 to 5 micrometres in diameter, E. huxleyi produce approximately one-third of the total calcium carbonate produced in the marine environment. The oceanic algal blooms of E. huxleyi are the largest, forming blooms visible from space. An example of these extensive coccolithophore blooms is the Great Calcite Belt, a band of bright, reflective water in the Southern Ocean which occurs every year during the Southern Hemisphere summer. Coccolithophore blooms appear in this way due to their coccoliths, which act as microscopic mirrors, reflecting light and brightening the ocean. Numerous studies have been conducted on these coccoliths. However, a complete understanding of the benefits they provide to coccolithophores is lacking. Several theories have been proposed in an attempt to explain the function and evolutionary advantage coccoliths confer. These include that the coccosphere could protect the integrity of the cell and maintain a suitable microenvironment around the cell's surface, shield against virus infection, reduce grazing rates, permit cells to regulate their buoyancy, serve as an energy dissipating mechanism under high irradiances, and or modify the light environment of the cell. Although the function of coccoliths is not certain, the role of coccolithophores and their coccoliths in Earth's biogeochemistry has been recognised as important and complex. In the Cretaceous, when coccolithophores began proliferating in the open oceans, they caused a switch in the major site of global carbonate deposition from shallow seas to the deep ocean for the first time in Earth's history. This revolutionised the regulation of ocean carbon chemistry. Coccolithophores actively participate in gas exchange between seawater and the atmosphere and to the export of organic matter and carbonate to deep oceanic layers and deep sea sediments. Due to their secretion of coccoliths, coccolithophores are responsible for approximately half of all modern precipitation of calcium carbonate in the oceans. Thus, coccolithophores play a primary role in the global carbon cycle. Coccolithophores uptake carbon dioxide during photosynthesis converting the carbon dioxide to biomass. Following the death of a coccolithophore, the carbon assimilated in the coccoliths will either dissolve in the surface waters or sink out of the photic zone as part of marine snow. Marine snow is the term used to describe the constant flux of microscopic organic particles from the upper photic zone to the deep ocean and comprises of aggregates of dead phytoplankton, zooplankton and animal faecal pellets. In the ocean, one of the main pools of organic carbon is particulate organic carbon. POC is the main pathway by which organic carbon formed by photosynthesis in the ocean surface layers is transferred to deeper ocean layers where it may be sequestered, and therefore POC is an integral part of the global carbon cycle. The aggregation of coccoliths with the marine snow ballasts organic matter that otherwise would not sink to deep oceanic layers and potentially to the deep sea floor. 
the massive downward flux of carbon from the upper ocean to the sediments at the sea floor in this marine snow form results in the removal of carbon that would otherwise be transferred to the atmosphere, as the downward flux of marine snow drives the biological pump, which is a key component of the global carbon cycle. Coccoliths may therefore be viewed as, and have been proposed to be, one of the main drivers of the open ocean organic pump, which removes CO2 from the atmosphere. Since the Cretaceous, coccoliths have continued to be the prime contributors to the accumulation of kilometres thick calcareous ooze covering approximately 35% of the ocean floor. These carbonate deposits are eventually subducted into the mantle of the earth, depleting carbon from the ocean surface for millions of years. Additionally, coccolithophores are the main actors of the carbonate counterpump, releasing carbon dioxide through the calcification reaction, therefore acting as a short-term source of upper ocean and atmospheric carbon dioxide. However, the effects of coccolith ballasting on atmospheric CO2 concentration has been suggested to outweigh CO2 output from biomineralization. Coccolithophores not only impact climate in relation to the carbon cycle, but also via the global sulfur cycle. Coccolithophores such as E. huxleyi directly links to climate change as they are intense producers of the chemical DMSP. It is proposed that coccolithophores produce DMSP as an osmoprotectant to regulate their internal osmotic environment. DMSP is the precursor of dimethyl sulfide, DMS, a gas which plays a significant role in regulating Earth's climate. When the coccolithophores are stressed or destroyed via senescence, grazing processes, viral lysis or microbial attack, DMSP enters the environment and is degraded by bacteria, producing DMS. The emissions of DMS by the coccolithophores oxidize, forming sulfate aerosols in the atmosphere, which is a highly efficient cloud condensation nucleus. The sulfur aerosols allow water vapor to condense around them and thus enhance cloud formation. Clouds have a major impact on the Earth's climate by providing a cooling effect as they deflect solar radiation and therefore prevent sunlight from heating the Earth's surface. The production of clouds over the oceans has an even bigger impact as they are more extensive and darker than land and so absorb majority of the heat hitting the planet. Therefore, coccolithophores additionally play a significant role in the sulfur cycle through DMS emissions which induce additional cloud formation in the atmosphere and thereby increase this cloud cover which blocks solar radiation, providing a cooling effect. Furthermore, the release of DMSP into the surrounding seawater provides substantial levels of dissolved organic carbon for heterotrophic bacteria and is a significant source of carbon and sulfur in the microbial food web in regions where coccolithophores occur. DMS plays an important biogeochemical role in the global sea to land transfer of sulfur, has the potential to affect remote oceanic weather patterns due to its ability to generate cloud condensing nuclei and is intimately linked to the pelagic food web and microbial loop. As the bulk of DMS produced on Earth originates from DMSP, produced and stored in marine phytoplankton, it is therefore critical to understand such processes that release DMS in order to understand its production. Research not only explores the impacts of coccolithophores on climate, but the impact changing climate has on coccolithophores. Over the years, the rapid impact of elevated anthropogenic CO2 on the carbonate system in the oceans has been demonstrated. Approximately one-third of anthropogenic CO2 released into the atmosphere has been absorbed by the oceans, where it partitions into the constituent ions of carbonic acid. This leads to ocean acidification, one of the major threats to marine ecosystems and particularly to calcifying organisms such as coccolithophores, as calcium carbonate dissolves at lower pH conditions. Thus, particular attention has recently been focused on understanding how climate change and ocean acidification will affect coccolithophore calcification. It is expected that calcification by coccolithophores would be reduced. However, contradictory results between and even within coccolithophore species have been yielded from culture experiments investigating the physiological response of coccolithophore calcification. Several studies have reported that increased CO2 concentrations reduced calcite production and caused coccolith malformations, one species being E. huxleyite. However, studies have also reported an increase in coccolithophore calcification with decreasing pH. 
A study from 2008 indicated that calcification and net primary production of E. Huxleyi are significantly increased by high CO2 partial pressures. This study additionally stated that a 40% increase in average coccolith mass has occurred over the past 220 years, demonstrating that coccolith fours are already responding to rising atmospheric CO2 partial pressures and will likely continue to respond. De Vargas et al. 2007. Further explains that the intense genetic turnover of pelagic biodiversity may be a key evolutionary strategy for survival in this unstable and climatically responsive environment. However, this is difficult to test in laboratory conditions. Additionally, as their biomineralization was originally selected in a high CO2, low pH aragonite ocean, as seen through their fossil record and molecular evolution, and have evidently radiated into morphological diversity through history. Perhaps the coccolith spores may adapt as they have done in the past. Further analysis is required to determine the future of coccolith spores and understand the mechanism and evolution of calcification, as reported effects of ocean acidification on coccolith spore calcification are confounded by an incomplete understanding of the cellular processes involved in the intracellular production of their calcite cells. Majority of information on the molecular and physiological processes of calcification is restricted to a few model species, such as E. Huxleyi, and most information has been derived from calcifying species representing only two of the four extant calcifying orders. Furthermore, although these reported findings of coccolithophore adaptation may seem hopeful to the survival of the coccolithophores, knowledge of their adaptation capacity in the future is limited. And the consequences following changes to such an influential group of organisms that significantly contribute to Earth's biogeochemical processes is unknown.